then we come to the next part of the presentation of this afternoon, uh, which will be done by Ngoc from the University of Twente. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Anh Ngoc Phu from uh, Products and Technology Group, uh, University of Twente. So now I would like to um, continue the program uh, with a presentation uh, titled uh, Efficient Modeling of Giant Interaction for Enhanced uh, Accuracy in Overgrading Simulation. So my talk will include uh, four parts. Um, we will start with uh, product, uh, project uh, objectives, challenges, and then we will talk about simulation development of the uh, uh, operating process. And then we will discuss about uh, more validation and numerical study. And then uh, the end will be a summary and outlook. So uh, as already discussed, uh, the objective of, of the project is to uh, develop new uh, high performance ventilator uh, triaxial overgrading. And also we want to develop a digital simulation and party side tool. So which uh, lead to uh, the topic of my project, uh, numerical simulation of the operating process. And because um, the partner already uh, discussed a lot about the um, machine design and introduce about the operating process. So um, I will discuss um, the motivation why they need the simulation. So uh, this slide show you the production chain. Uh, the composite uh, preform. And first we design um, the mandrel, and then we do a braiding, and then we have uh, recent chance molding, and then we uh, do qualification for the parts. Um, and in reality, we need to do uh, several loops uh, in order to get uh, the final uh, product. Um, so, with that, we waste a lot of uh, material energy and labor efforts. Um, and uh, in the first phase of the designing, um, we need to optimize for the uh, important parameter of the braid. Uh, for example, the braid angle, uh, spaces between yarn and uh, braid thickness that I show you here in the picture. And that's why uh, we need a uh, simulation in order to uh, accelerate the process change uh, for designing the uh, graded composite. And previously, uh, our group had developed uh, a so-called abrasion, uh, which is able to uh, simulate the operating process. And the core of the software is uh, based on a kinematic solver. So with a uh, kinematic solver, we have uh, very fast calculation, uh, which is uh, provide needed information. And um, one characteristic, uh, the yarn will remain fixed uh, after contact with the mandrel, and the yarn thickness can be neglected, and no interaction between yarns. So that means the jam can be modeled uh, individual, individually. And at the beginning of the project, uh, we uh, try to validate our kinematic model with uh, experimental data, uh, which is provided by our partner. Um, so the mantrail have ellipt elliptic cross section. And here I plot uh, the total braid angle versus the perimeter of the uh, cross section, the mandrel, as 400 uh, millimeter from the tip of the mandrel. And as you can see, uh, at the middle of the mandrel, it predicts quite well the braid angle. However, at the edge of the mandrel, there is uh, about 20 degree different between the simulated and incremental data. And the possible reason is due to uh, neglecting the interaction between yarn and also uh, friction between yarn and the bearing. So our aim is to implement the yarn uh, interaction model on the base of the kinematic model. Uh, with that idea, uh, we have outlined for the project so we go step by step. First, 
we uh, develop a bijectual overgrading model, and then we uh, extend it to triaxial overgrading model. And with the model, we need inputs. In this case, the John John uh, in, uh, friction. So we need to um, develop the method uh, to determine this friction. And later, we do more validation and numerical study. So the aim is to uh, develop a simulation model which can validate for varying for vary, uh, mangrove shape and including young interaction and efficient in uh, computation time and accuracy. Um, we have some assumption before going to the development of the model. We uh, assume um, the giant is at giant level and only transfer the axial forces. Uh, that means no shear and bending supported. Uh, the yarn is assumed to be mudless and inextensible. And we um, derive our math mathematical uh, equation based on once we started process. So we start from a single contact point uh, to multiple contact points. So our approach is uh, using uh, so-called Euler Lagrange. Uh, method. Um, so assume that we have 2D John, which have contact point uh, at B, I'll show you here. And the position of B can be described by X and Y coordinates. And in reality, the contact point will slide or move uh, along the length of the of the yarn. And in order to uh, do that, we introduce uh, a new uh, degree of freedom, which is uh, Euler's in degree of freedom, which allows the material to go through the point. And here I show you the simulation uh, of this method. And using this idea, we were able to uh, develop a single contact, uh, jan to jan contact model. Uh, and to enable this sliding process, we add two Eulerians degree freedom and stick slip. Uh, I distinguished it using Hamilton friction. With this model, we will extend to a multiple contact point model using a fast uh, frontal approach and friction at each um, interrelated point were added and we use uh, iterative treatment in order to stabilize the solution. So here I show you one simulation, which have uh, three by three yarn across each other. And the two algorithms were implemented for biaxial and triaxial overbraiding. Um, now the simulation are taken into account the uh, yang yang interaction um, valid for um, complex mandrel shape and uh, very efficient in computational time with order of second for each time frame. And the outcome of this work is being uh, published in article journal, so you can try it. And any model needs uh, input. In this way, uh, the friction coefficient. And the question is, how can we obtain this? So to do that, we um, decide a um, increment method. Um, so the idea is that we uh, have two yarn on top on top of each other, one yarn as slide, and then um, <coughs> the um, clamper were decided on the base of the universal material tester. And we measure the friction force using a uh, 3D force sensor and we test um, the sliding of friction for different conditions for uh, different normal force. 
uh, in dry and wet condition. And also we test with varying the uh, range of interjar angle from 30, uh, 30 degree to perpendicular jar. And here I show you uh, the results for uh, drying yarn and wet yarn. I plot the dynamic friction coefficient versus the normal force. And for different inter angle. Um, so as you can see, um, when the uh, normal force increase, coefficient uh, efficient decrease. And it highly depends on the uh, inter angle of the yarn. And consistently, we observe the wet uh, coefficient of friction uh, higher than uh, the dry coefficient of friction. So based on that uh, implemented re results, we introduce a uh, friction law, which is based on the uh, whole well model. And the descriptive model capture well the effect of the interjar angle, uh, normal force, in dry and wet conditions. And our result is being uh, published. So now with the results, we uh, can validate um, the experimental data that I previously discussed. So we use elliptic mandrel uh, using diamond pattern and friction data from experiments. Here I plot you uh, again the total rated angle and um, perimeter of the cross section. And as you can see, compared to the kinematic model, uh, we observe very uh, significant improve of the um, new uh, bias or overgrading model. So especially at the edges of the mantrail, we see very close uh, simulated data compared to the experimental data. And further, we um, do the numerical study using triaxial overgrading. And in this case, I use uh, mantrail with, with a uh, part of shape. Uh, so the mandrel have a cylindrical shape at the beginning, and then it uh, transits to uh, an elliptic cross section. So we study different effects of uh, varying size, varying shape, and uh, amount of the force applied to the UD yarn. Here I show you the simulation, the process. And here uh, the results for the numerical study. Um, I plot you the great angle and uh, versus the graded length. Uh, so the line uh, represent the data at the edge of the mandrel, and the dashed line represent the data on top of the mandrel at 25% of the perimeter. And also, I plot you for the uh, simulated data for different uh, radius uh, of the guiding. So as you can see, uh, when we increase the radius of the guiding, the startup rate angle increase. And up to a certain point, it will go to steady state. And it doesn't depend on the uh, radius of the guiding anymore. And when it reached to the uh, elliptic cross section, the two um, braid angles separate. So at the edges, it, uh, the braid angle is sharper than uh, the braid angle at the top of the mantra. And also, if I change this, the, the shape of the guy ring from a uh, circular guy ring to elliptic guy ring, and with different radius, we can also see the different. Um, so with elliptic guiding, the braid angle at 0% and 20% of the perimeter will be separate. 
So at the edge, it will be sharper. And it's uh, consistent with a larger uh, wiring radius. And in the last study, I uh, vary the, uh, the tension force at the UD John with the amount of uh, 1, 2, and 4 Newton. And if we um, buoy the UD John with very high force, the break angle at the beginning will, will increase. This is because uh, the break is more open when we buoy. Uh, the actual yarn and it creates more room so that the yarn can slide more until reaching the uh, mantra. And when it, it reaches to steady state, uh, it doesn't matter how much force you apply. So um, with that result so far, I'd like to summary the work. Uh, so we have done the development of the bi-axial and tri-axial overbraiding simulation. We successfully uh, include yarn in the direction uh, of the braid. And uh, we found out that the yarn in the direction influenced the results of the uh, braid angle. And uh, we have done the development of an uh, experimental method to determine the friction coefficient. Uh, so these results can be used as inputs for the simulation. And for future work, uh, the model can be extended for more complex uh, interlatement uh, structure. And we can extend uh, the model for the application in optimization procedure. So this is the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.